in honor of the man of the hour. Don't push me because I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my bets. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode 49 of the Access to Combat podcast. I'm one half of your host, Hugo the Boss. Hugo got next. Joined by my co host. As always, it's your boy, Ray, Ray Boogie, Rayo from the AO. What's going on, my brother? The usual, man, wearing this Mets gear, you know, because it's opening day tomorrow. So, P. Oh. Diddy and the New York Mets, well, you know, it's going to get rained out, so Friday. But but before we get into any of this, uh, <laughs> before we get to any of these fights for this weekend, you're in the business. Like, comment, subscribe, follow Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Hey, everybody enjoying these visuals right now. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay up to date. And for all of our audio listeners, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcast, you already know. And just before we jump into these fights this weekend, we're going to recap some of our bets from last weekend. Me and my brother um, destroyed, to be frank, which I'm very happy about. Yeah, we, did, uh, we did pretty good. We <laughs> did pretty good. Pretty good. Um, I'll run through my bets really quick. My losers, because it's so few. Jeez. <laughs> oh, it's a good weekend. Um, Muhammad Usman's decision. Jarno Aaron sub. Kerr Hullabog's knockout. Kerr Hullabog's rounds two and three. Emin Shabazian. And Kerr Hullabog's money line. Man, Kurt rinsed us. <laughs> but hey, listen, that was uh, just turned out to be a bad bet. Just a bad beat. Just, it, yeah. It is, it is what it is. My man Trey Ogden then had the uh, brain of Brainiac and the blood of Gorilla Grodd running through him, boy. <laughs> That man came in like a super villain. <laughs> but <laughs> but to um, jump right into the winners, just to speed on through this, we have Padilla, money line. Two and a half units on Peyton Talbot's money line. Julian Arosa sub. Fernando Padilla sub. And then we had Patricio Pitbull for Bellator Belfast. We had his money line. Payday, mm. payday, you want payday. We, we cleaned up this weekend. We made some good bets. We put heavy units on all three of those fighters. And the props were, you know, small risk, high reward. And we made a ton. We, I finished close to six units up last weekend. So I'm a very, very happy man. How about you, brother? Well, like I mentioned previously, you know, I had a, had a pretty successful weekend. Not too mad at it overall. UFC finished about three units up. Bellator, just one bet, but, you know, it was a fat, almost two-unit come up. Totaling a total of uh, five for your boy. Uh, Let's see. What I got wrong here, the Usman money line. I'd play that again, to be honest. I, I thought he should have won that fight. If, if I knew he wasn't going to wrestle, I wouldn't have touched it. But, yep. Uh, Cody Gibson money line. That man got rinsed. He looked completely old. Kurt Hollabog. That money line looked dog shit. <laughs> that was a bad beat. Yeah. I, I'll take it. I'll bet him again his next fight. You live and you learn, you know? <laughs> uh, three long shots uh, that I didn't hit. Let's see. We got Jarno Aaron sub. <laughs> I'd play that again, to be honest. And Kurt Hollabog round two and three. <laughs> I would not play that again. Now, got that Jarno Aaron's money line. Was feeling that. Two units on Padilla. I was feeling that two and a half units on Peyton Talbot. Who that too easy. And uh, let's see, hit the Erosa sub. That was nice. And the Padilla sub. And then my only lone bet for Bellator Belfast, Patricio, money line, two units. Hit that. Payday, payday, you want payday. It's a beautiful life. Beautiful life. <laughs> Let's uh let's keep the money train rolling. Let's let's keep it hot. You don't want your boys to get hot. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm I'm sweating thinking about staying hot. <laughs> anyway, you ready to jump into this, my brother? Let's do it, bro. To kick off the prelim portion of UFC Atlantic City, we got Angel Pacheco going one on one with Colin Lung Lungren Lockren Lockren mm -hmm. the Don Lockren. 8-1, fighting out of Ireland, hailing from Ireland, 27 years old. Angel Pacheco, 7-2, fighting out of Minnesota. I think he's currently fighting out of, uh, what's that, uh, what's Ralph Hans camp again? Uh, um, Mafia Boys. Mafia uh, Boys, yeah. Cartel. The, 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 the Boston, New England Cartel. Yeah, the, uh, the New England. I was going to say the Boston Cartel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 32 years old. Pacheco, 
famously known for his loss in the UFC uh, Contender Series where he got kind of molly whopped, but such a good showing, Dana White decided to sign him anyway. Striker, hell of a chin, kind of a zombie, can be taken down. I like Logren here. Lo- How do you say his name again? Logren. Lochran, Lochran. I like Lochran here. Pacheco's moving down in weight. For me, that's kind of a red flag. Never a fan of that. Not, you know, this guy's been, if you look at his past history, he goes up and down in weight a lot. So that's always kind of a, like a red flag for me. Lochran made his debut against Tyler Lapilus in France. Tough fight. Tough fight, but it was a close fight. He did take a round off of him. What Lochran likes to do is uh, counter-strike, get to the grappling, and kind of just beat you up. Pacheco can be taken down, in my opinion. Uh, I think he gets the win here. Probably by decision, because he's a tough guy to get out, but, you know, I wouldn't hate you if you played the round two, round three, but I'm leaning Lochran here. Yeah, I'm with you, and I'm with you because um, Pacheco is going to be two inches taller than this guy. That's it predominantly. That's the only real advantage he's going to have in this fight. But Lockwood is built like a bull and he does not get tired. He's shown he can go for three rounds, three hard rounds and really get after it against Lapilus, who I think is a huge step up in competition for him. Probably shouldn't have even been in that fight, to be frank. I think it was a little bit of a mismatch. But Angel Pacheco um, got real famous because his ear was practically hanging off his head after that contender series fight. Um, I think he probably tore the tendons or something on the side of his ear. Yeah, Danny, and it, said, Danny said it was some dirty shit to him. It was bad. Yeah. It was bad. Like, that was one of the worst. Besides the ear actually exploding, like, because the cauliflower popped, that's one of the worst ear injuries I've seen in a fight. Um, but he's a dog. Stood in there, took shots to the side of the head. He's a dog. I just think Lockwood's going to be able to control him with the wrestling gear, probably in cruise to a decision. Because Pacheco is um, very durable, very hard to finish, hard to kill like Steven Seagal. I like Lockwood for the decision here. Next fight on the prelims at middleweight, we got Andre Petrowski go on one with the Mamba, Jacob Malkoon. Petrowski, 10 and 2, fighting out of Pennsylvania, 32 years old. Malkoon, fighting out of Australia, 7 and 3 overall, 28 years old. Uh, we got a classic uh, grappler versus grappler match here. I'm slightly leaning at the moment, Malkoon. I've been going back and forth on this fight. I think Malkoon's got the better resume. I think he's fought the better brand of competition. I think he's lost to the better brand of competition. I think he's got the cardio, and I think he's going to be able to control the pace for the most part. The problem is, is he's going against an opponent in Petrowski who can crack. I think the cardio issues might be a little overblown, but I still lean Malkoon in terms of cardio edge. Petrowski, like I said, not the best resume but he has shown crazy finishing ability he finished maximoff malkoon could not finish maximoff and malkoon had a one-legged maximoff early and that fight ended up going to decision i think this fight probably goes over all the finishing upside is on the petrowski side if the line gets a little more disrespectful i'm still i'm kind of considering a play on petrowski at the moment particularly itd Cause yes. I don't think he's gonna win the minutes here. Maybe this is the this is the time to like maybe jump in like in on a uh, finish only. Correct. If it goes to decision, because he's plus two hundred, he's plus two hundred. So his finish only has got to be at least three four. No, nah, probably not. It's probably a little lower because I think it's it's probably his most obvious path to victory. If I'm being honest, who knows? Like I said, I I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't say that because Bakun has shown that he's somewhat durable. He's not the most durable guy ever, but if. I'm with you. I'm with you on it though, because I just think plus two hundred on a guy who is kind of going to be led into what his strength is, and he's a gorilla who has fought at eighty five before. You know, uh, Malkoon is not the biggest eighty fiver. No, you Petrowski know, is going to be the bigger guy here. Correct, which is crazy because he's fought at seventy. You know, so I just you know, I'm with you. If this one gets more disrespectful, I think you play the ITD because I could see him locking up a guillotine. He trains in Philly with the killers over there, the Jeremiah Wells's of the world, the Sean Brady's, um, homeboy Joe Pfeiffer, even though Joe Pfeiffer, you know, not the biggest puncher ever, you know, so just want to put that out there again it's because I knew that was cap and, you know, from the beginning. Big cap. You know, he punches hard in Francis and Gano, yeah? All right, yeah, big cap. <laughs> so, but yeah, I, I'm with you here. I like 
Malkun is the lean via decision, but if Petrovsky is inside the distance uh, line, is huge. I'll play it because I I think he has the capability, he has the power and the submission defense and actual offense to get this done. So, next up on the prelims, we got women flyweight fight here. Melissa Gatto going one on one with Victoria Dudakova. Gatto eight two and two fighting out of Brazil, hailing from Brazil, twenty eight years old. Dudakova, a perfect eight and zero oh, fighting out of Russia, hailing from Russia, twenty five years old. Uh, just like the previous prelim fight, I think this is another grappler versus grappler. This is uh, these two ladies, decent. Maybe I'm being too nice. Uh, serviceable striking. Uh, I think Gato probably hits with a little more. I said Gato or Gato? It, either or. I, I, I don't know what the hell I said there. Gato, the cat. She hits with a little more pop, even though I think her striking's a little more pedestrian. Dudakova, I think she's got the better footwork in terms of the stand up, but I think she's a little more uncomfortable on the feet. Both these girls want to get it to the ground. I think Dudakova is probably the better wrestler. Gato, the better submission threat for definitely sure. Definitely the better grappler, and especially off her back. She's she's only lost to Tracy Cortez, who was able to control her, and Lipsky, who, in my opinion, this is Lipsky 2.0. She's been she's a top fifteen fighter. She's kind of back. She's yeah. She's also, a top fifteen fighter. You can argue that she beat Lipsky on the feet. Yes, I'm gonna lean Gato here for the as the pick. As for a bet, I'm not too sure what I want to do with this fight at the moment. What about you? I'm with you on everything you said. Um, I th- and I, I, you, you read it. You actually had brought up the narrative, and I'll bring it back up because it's good that you brought it up and uh, like off camera, obviously. That uh, due to COVID, they kind of list her as a striker that kind of goes to a wrestling. And yeah, and you, I'm with you. I, I you look at the footage. She's more of a wrestler that's kind of learned how to strike. Yeah, she loves she loves to go straight to the grappling. Yeah, straight to the wrestling. My thing is, if you're not a good defensive wrestler, or like a decent prospect like a Lipsky or like a Cortez, there's a very good chance Gato's gonna wrap you up from her back because she's filthy. That's the only thing I don't like about Gato. She's too comfortable off her back, yes. so she can lose minutes in this fight. But I think she's the more dangerous fighter. And also another thing to kind of bring up before I forget, Dudakova is moving up in weight. Now, she has fought in the amateurs as heavy as bantamweight, but her whole pro career, she's never fought heavier than strawweight. So she's moving up to flyweight for the first time in her pro career. Yeah, I hate this because Melissa's not a small girl. No, she's big. She's big. She's she's kind of. She's kind of bricked up. She's bricked up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was the right terminology to use there, but she's she's a solid woman. I tell you what is the, the right terminology. No ditty. <laughs> 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 but um, I will. I'm with you on this. I, 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 I think Gatto, I might play it. I might play her ITD because she's a finisher. I think if uh, she wins, I think her path is sub. Sub. I don't think she's going to win the minutes in this fight. Probably not. She's going to win the moments. The thing is, she knows how to use her range. Uh, Dudakova, when she strikes, she kind of likes to get in. Correct. And, I mean, that, I mean, that could be a good thing because we haven't really seen Gato pushed that way. And I think she's, like I said, she's got the better footwork. But I, the stand-up is going to be pretty interesting. I think on the ground, again, is Gato's on her back. Oh, it's, oh, it's curtains. I think this is going to be a fun match on the ground. Yeah. When it comes to the stand-up, though, I think that's where the toss-up is kind of like. Yeah, I just think Gato hits harder. And, yeah, I, I think and, so, too. And that's that's where I lay, I lay with this. That's why I think I got to give it to Gato, because she's just more of a threat everywhere. I don't know. The money line's playable if you want to play that minus 162, but I don't know if I want to play a low-level women's MMA fight, to be frank. I think it's pretty. It's lined pretty accurately right yes, now. Yes, yes. It's just, it's just I, I don't know, because women's MMA is so volatile in yes. terms of, like, where people are at and, you know. I won't get into it, but Gato's the lean for sure. Next fight on the prelims, we got a run back at light heavyweight with a debuting Ibo Ibo mm. Aslan, the last Ottoman, going one on one with Anton, the pleasure man, Turkali. <laughs> Ask your wife. <laughs> Ask your wife. Was, what, he made that line that good. What, what, that no, press what, conference. There was another phrase that he had where he was like, um, something about 
Uh, oh man, I can't remember. If if it comes back to me, I'll definitely bring it up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got Aslan, the debut in Aslan, twelve and one, fighting out of Turkey. Hail from Turkey, twenty seven years old, going one on one with the Pleasure Man, eight and three, fighting out of Sweden, 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 Sweden. hailing from Sweden, twenty seven years old. The debut in Aslan. I mean, listen, he's pretty he's pretty fast to break down. His tape was pretty easy to find. And pretty easy to watch because dude's a hammer. 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 Strong, strong leg kicks, powerful puncher. Never really been out the first round. He's killed everybody. He's, he's <laughs> in a video game. He's destroyed cans. Yeah. Now, the problem is, is that he's destroyed cans. The only time he got pushed into the second round, ironically, was his only lost. Ironically, was the pleasure man. Turkali. Uh, this guy is a grappler. Not the best chin, not the best defense. Got flatlined by Tyson Pedro. Went life and death with Victor Petrino. <laughs> Petrino could have like four times death. <laughs> Dude, I mean, you got to give it to him. I mean, X go and give it to him. He, he, he survived and made that a fun fight. Yes. But Turkali is not. Also, also, by the way, went in there with Jalton Almeida. And that was the debut nuts. where he got rinsed. In the contender series. <laughs> He's a nut job for taking that fight. I'm going to lean to Kali here. I've been... But I like this as a live bet spot, Loki. I feel like this is probably a live bet spot. Okay. I think... Because I, I want to lean... I've been... Listen, I've been a little on and off in terms of like these rematches. I think Ebo wants to get his lick back. I, I was wrong... In the chase on fight with P uh, Penny Kianzat, I thought P Kianzat was like, you know, I'm going to get this lick back. She got licked. Hey, Plus. oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I was right in the uh, the Joanne Wood fight against uh, Marina yeah. Moroz. But I didn't bet it like a dumbass. I bet Moroz because, you know, I was like, this girl's retiring, whatever. She don't want to be here no more. She washed Moreau's. I'm the bet might be again. It's probably a live bet fight. I'm gonna be rooting for Ebo. I think both these guys are kind of whack. If I'm being completely honest, but Turkali's the pick. Ebo might be the bet. This is probably a live bet spot. I probably shouldn't be even touching this fight, but I'm a I'm a degenerate at the end of the day. So I mean, I don't know. What about you, my brother? I'm with you. Um, like the Pani Kianza fight, she's just a jag, just another gal, just another gal. You know what I'm saying? Well so, I, I, I think both of these people, both of these men are um, mm, Ebo. Who? I um, five five minutes of gas, by the way. That's so. it. Yeah, I mean he hits hard, man. But I just would assume that he's gonna learn from his last fight, and you know, hey, I know I gassed out against this dumbass last time. Let me. Maybe pace it because he was working him that first round too, but once it got into the second round, my man was <gasps> he needed a gas. He needed like a what oxygen do you call them? An oxygen tank. He needed what that shit Greg Hardy was hitting on the asthma pump. You know what I'm saying? He needed <laughs> he, he it bad. Did. He needed the pump for sure. He needed it bad like Usher and shit. You know what I'm saying? So his bars. <laughs> I like uh, I like Ebo early. Anton Light bet. That's how I like this. I, I don't think any of these guys is worth your money. This is very low level, to be frank. This is like betting a low level woman in a woman's MMA fight. I, I think when you've got a debuting guy versus a guy who's not really good, and you know, our philosophy on this podcast is don't fade bums with bums. And I, I like the unders here. I mean, yeah, but yeah. They're, they're probably juiced. We don't know yet. We'll Actually, find out later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to find out later because I can't see him. So, um, but. Yeah, I like Ebo early and Tom late. That's how I'm playing this. If I had to pick a winner, I'm going to pick Ebo because it's a rematch and I think he's going to learn. So give me Ebo. Definitely no interest in betting this fight unless it's a live bet spot on Takali. So next fight on the prelims, men's featherweight. We got the controller, Connor Matthews. Who? Going one on one with the great Dennis Bazookia or Bazooka. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Bazooka name. sounds better. I'm going to call him Bazooka. <laughs> Connor Matthews uh, fighting out of Fall River, Massachusetts. Boston boy. 31 years old. 7-1 overall. Going one-on-one -on -one with the great Bazooka. 
Oh, that sounds pause. <laughs> Eleven and four, fighting out of Staten Island, New York. Twenty six years old. Ah, uh, another low level fight. Mm, listen, I did tape on both these guys, and listen, I know I've stated on the podcast before. I like to fade these Longo Weidman guys, but watching tape on Connor Matthews. I can't fade this guy. I think Bazooka is probably better than him literally everywhere. And I know much to my brother's chagrin, I'm probably going to be betting this fight. <laughs> I, I think the line is close enough. Bazooka, listen, I get it. He stepped in last minute, got boxed up by Sean Woodson, got flatlined by Emmers. Those are two really good UFC caliber losses if you're asking me. I agree. Connor Matthews, I just don't think he, I don't think he's a good striker. I don't think he hits hard enough. He's got a one, two, he jumps Gilly, but he don't really grapple. So he's more of an opportunistic kind of like submission guy. Hasn't really shown the best cardio. I just think Bazooka's Bazooka's just got the better grappling. I think he's just got the better cardio. I think he's got, I think he's the stronger puncher. He's got the better chin. I just like, I think Bazooka's going to win this fight. Don't know how, but the line is close enough where I'm going to get a little degenerate. I'm definitely going to bet this fight. I'm picking Bazooka for the win here, and I'm probably going to bet Bazooka. What about you, my brother? Well, there's a couple of things. Connor Matthews. They would have been Ben packing them up. <laughs> I think he's um, a pack-up machine, to be frank with you. He ain't <laughs> Connor McGregor, and he ain't Matt Hughes. That's all I know, even though his name <laughs> composes of both of those legends. Well, Matt Hughes. Oh, I guess Matt Matthew. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yo, saying. bars. I spit it out here, bro. Okay, I'm that's, spitting. That's not the semi bars. I'll give that one to you, though. But what I will say is, I, I, I don't. I'm just not big on fading bums with bums. Like, I, you know, I don't think Bazooka belongs in the, the UFC. You know, shout out to my Albanian homies, by the way, because he's Albanian, but he don't belong in the UFC. And I don't. Connor Matthews does have some pop on his shot. So, could I see. Bazooki getting knocked out in this fight? Sure, because he got packed up by Jamal Emers, who does crack, but Jamal Emers is not a big finisher in the U on the UFC level. He's just not. So, you know, I like Bazooki here, but, you know, for me to put any money down in this fight... Stupid. I'm not going to let you get the chance. You know, my degenerate ass might figure out a way to bet this fight, despite saying, you know, putting Takashi 6 9 out right now and saying stupid, but I might be a little stupid bet this fight, but... You want the honest truth? I don't think so. I think there's a lot of other better spots to place your money. Um, I probably like violence in this fight. That I will say. Maybe. I don't know. Because these guys have shown a propensity to be durable. But I'm not sure about Bazooki after his last fight. You know, so it's... When I have this many variables, I, I tend to stay away. You know, so I like I like the sure thing. You know, like Miguel would say. So... Oh, my God. <laughs> so, give me Bazooki. Um... Not too much interest in betting this fight. Next fight on the prelims. Men's featherweight. Once again, we got Julio Arce going one-on-one -on -one with the Blaze. I didn't even know that was his nickname. Herbert Burns. Oh, brother. <laughs> this guy stinks. I was waiting for you to hit something there. <laughs> hey. Pause. Uh, no ditty. We got <laughs> Julio Arce here. 18 and 6 overall. Fighting out of Jersey. 34 years old. But Arce is Brazilian, right? I, I don't recall. I don't remember. Oh, no. I say he's American. Uh, I, we claim him. And he's fighting out of Jersey. So, I mean, hey, Atlantic City. I think he might be reeking low-key. Can't confirm or deny that, but... Then we got Herbert Burns here. The Blaze. 11-4 and four overall. Fighting out of Brazil. Hailing from Brazil. 36 years old. Uh, all right. I mean, this fight is pretty... It's pretty much binary, right? I mean, it burns early. Super early. First round. Maybe second round. If not, Julio takes over. And, you know, Julio buy whatever he wants, to be honest. Herbert Burns, super dangerous in the first round. Hits hard. Excellent jujitsu. 100% uh, live for a finish. I think from a betting perspective, if I see anything probably plus 400 on his side, I might, I might put a quarter unit, if I'm being honest. Don't know yet, but I'm going to leave that one alone. Julio Arce should win this fight. Julio Arce, the better overall MMA fighter. Way better striking. He's just got to survive the first five minutes. He's got excellent takedown defense. Uh, Arce late. Burns early. Play, play, play a sub round one. 
Yeah. That's how you play him. After, anything after round one, a uh, live bet on Julio Arce. Super necessary. 100%. I think, um, I think Julio... It's exactly what you said. Good takedown defense, way better striker, world better striker than this guy on the feet. I think he was at, I think he was actually in um what is it? Tiger Showman's in New York for a little while too. So this is what I'm saying. He has decent striking. Train with Lyman Good, train with Shane Burgos. Um, I like Julio Arce here for obvious purposes, but I don't like this line. But I will say a live bet spot, especially if he's having a hard time with Herbert after the first round and Herbert is able to get him in some compromising positions. Even during the round, I think there's a there's opportunity to probably bet him if he gets down to even anywhere close to minus one fifty. I'm playing him because I think he's gonna rinse him. Like it's just what it is. I think Herbert is a guy who doesn't enjoy fighting. Not to sound terrible, you know, his he's not his brother, and I, it's okay, you know, like his his jujitsu is filthy. I don't like, know if he doesn't enjoy fighting. I just think he just doesn't enjoy being hit. He doesn't enjoy <laughs> fighting. Yeah, it's just what it is. Like because you're gonna get hit, bro. He gets he gets super discouraged. He's live to finish anybody. His jujitsu is filthy. So, like filthy. he's so quick on the like to get to your body, pause, get to your back, pause, take you down, pause, finish you. Hey, bro, he's crazy. Yeah, he's filthy though. Like and, that's and, and he swings hard as hell and early too. Like, yeah, he wants to get out of there. He, he wants to be in and he wants to be out. Flatlined. Um, a guy we're gonna be talking about later. Uh, Nate the Train <laughs> with a knee. Flatlined him. I never seen Nate go to sleep like that. That was crazy. Yeah. But yeah, Burns is dangerous early, man. But again, after round one, it's over. Fight's after over. That, I don't like to call guys quitters, but God, I mean, I, the, dude, I'm, listen, they've been like, there's going to, you're going to listen to a whole, whole bunch of other people. Maybe, you know, maybe go on Twitter. They're going to be dogging this guy out. Probably rightfully so. It's, it's just tough to get behind Burns. And the lane, he kind of decent money on him. Yeah. That's that, you know, but listen, I don't like to shit on these guys. I'm just telling you what we see or what I see rather, you know, and you just agree. That's why I said we, but we, we, <laughs> we French now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, um, I just think that he's, um, you can tell when someone doesn't want to be in there. I tell you what, the under, I can see this under the under one and a half is at plus 100. I think fight doesn't go is probably, probably safer. safer. Yeah. Because Julio's not really the biggest finisher. I can see a world level. because both these guys have had about of a two year layoff each, and um, you know both probably recovering from injuries and shit. I mean, I can see a, a fight where they're both taking their time in the first round. You're not wrong. You know, just trying to get their feet wet again. And then Herbert gets him in the second. And then Herbert could get him in the second. <laughs> I think the first two rounds are live for Herbert, hundred percent. After that, well, first round and a half at least. First round and a half. Yeah. If yeah. he comes out hot like he usually does, yeah, Herbert's Herbert's gonna burn. He. He's like a candle boy. He burns quick. Yes. And Julio, but Julio is definitely the side for both of us. Just not this line. Live bet and then Herbert first round or under a round and a half and, and Herbert for the win. Whatever line that is. That's how I, I, I have interest in this fight. So that's all. Next fight on the prelims. Women's straw weight. We got Verna. Verna. Janji Roba going one-on-one -on -one with Lupi. Lupita Godinez. Great fight. Excellent fight. Janji Roba. 19 and 3 overall, fighting at Brazil, hailing from Brazil, 35 years old, going against Lupi Godinez, 12 and 3 overall, hailing from Mexico, fighting out of Mexico, 30 years old. Excellent fight. Tough to pick. This is a, a big step up for, not a big, but definitely a sizable step up for Godinez. Hello? I thought my mic went out for a bit. No, you're good. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? <laughs> you can, I can hear Jimmy. I can't, you know Yo, can you hear Jimmy? I can hear Jimmy. <laughs> you listen to Jimmy. Can you hear Jimmy? I hear Jimmy. <laughs> well, here it is. I think Gudinez is probably going to win this fight. I, I'm leaning Gudinez. Not with the most confidence because, I mean, I mean, maybe it's debut fight, whatever, this and that. But when she fought uh, Penne, Jessica Penne, split decision loss, you can argue Gudinez won. That's the fight that kind of sticks out to me when I'm looking at this Janji Robo fight because that fight, Penne, even though she had little to no success taking Gudinez down, I think Gudinez is very, when it comes to her hips, super strong. You can't really take her down. But this is the best wrestler I think she's faced so far in the UFC. Penne was able to stick on her, though, get on her back, kind of cage push, 
And that it was kind of like a grimy fight. Gudinez, Gudinez was able to bully her. I think Gudinez won personally, but the way judging is scored nowadays, you never know. This fight probably goes the distance more often than not. I'm leaning Gudinez here. I think she's got the better striking. I think she's going to be able to defend the takedowns. Question is, is whether Janji Roba is going to be able to, one, keep up with the cardio, and two, stick on her like rice. Because if she does... I think it, it it could get a little hairy. Leaning Gudinez, don't know how I'm going to bet this fight, though. I like Lupita by decision on this fight for a couple of reasons. Verna is super dangerous on the floor. She's also pretty durable. Um, she's only lost to the elite of elite this weight class. Lupita's kind of trying to break into, like, this top 10. I think Verna's ranked number six, actually. Also, she is in the top 10 already, Lupita. She's trying to break into the top five. I like Verna a lot. I like her game. The problem is she's a little too one-dimensional. Lupita is better than her everywhere except for jiu-jitsu. And yeah. I think she has good enough wrestling. Her sister, I think, was on the Olympic team in Mexico for wrestling. Dinez, right? Yeah. Okay. And her wrestling is just as good, to be frank. She she probably could. If she really tried, she'd probably make the Olympic team. I think, she, 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 I think her uh, wrestling is good enough to mitigate a lot of Verna's attacks. I do fear for like holding her against the fence, but you are right. It's kind of going to look like that Rendon fight last week where she controlled her, but they didn't really count it, even though I, you could argue Rendon won the fight, to be frank. I 100% A agree. lot of people thought she won the fight. Yeah. Um, but I like, I like Lupita here because I think she's just a stronger wrestler. Unless she walks into a fucking guillotine, she's going to win this fight, in my yeah, opinion. She's going to land more damage. Everything. She's going to do a lot of things. But the thing is, she might be, she's going to be very respectful of her on the floor, too. But I could, if, if Verna keeps, you know, falling down to the floor and then asking her to come into the guard, I, 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 I don't see a world where Lupita's going to go down and follow her. But I like that because it kills time off the clock for it to actually get to the decision. Yeah. So I think Lupita by decision. That's how I'm going to play this. Next fight on the card. Men's featherweight and is currently constituted the prelim main event. We got Nate the Train Land Weir going against pretty boy. Jamal Emmers. Land Weir. 17 and 5, fighting out of Clarksville, Kentucky, 35 years old, going one on one with Jamal Emmers, who was 20 and 7, fighting out of the Redlands, California, 34 years old. I didn't even realize Jamal Emmers was that old. Yeah, he just missed a lot of time because of injuries. Yeah. Yep, unfortunately. Talented guy. I think I, this is another very good fight. This is a fight that I think Emmers should win. Emmers is super talented, athletic. I think he's a. Even though he doesn't go to it as much, he's a wrestler who can strike. I think he's just a good overall balanced fighter. The problem is, and maybe it's a little overblown, maybe it's not, but IQ-wise, he kind of makes some questionable decisions. His last fight against Jack Jenkins, which I still think he won, if he just would have went to the grappling, I mean, that's his bread and butter, right? That's what he came up with. That's what people know him for. He would have, I think he would have won that fight pretty handedly. Um, Bazook, I mean, that wasn't his last fight. His last fight was Bazookia, who he flatlined. But, you know, that's 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 a whatever. That happened in MSG. Um, his best wins currently at the moment, I think it would be, I don't know. I think you can argue he won the, G, uh, the Gige Chikate fight, but he lost that fight. So his best win currently is not good in the UFC. He's... <laughs> He hasn't beat anybody really that good. Lost to Eros in the Contender Series. Lost to Tiago Moises. He's fought some really good guys. But I think he should win here. What? But I, I like Landwehr. I like Landwehr at, at plus money. That's the that's the that's that's kind of the spot where you want to bet Landwehr. You don't want to bet him as a favorite. Landwehr is always live. He's a fucking dog. Pressure. I think on the ground, his, I don't think he's got bad wrestling and i don't think i think he's probably got better jujitsu yeah and then when it comes to the hands i think he's hittable but i think he thumps i don't think there's anywhere that emers is completely safe in this fight so the way this fight needs to play out is emers needs to just fight a, a good perfect fight and relying on that for 15 plus minutes against landwehr is it that it's I don't want to say it's a tall task, but I mean... It's a guy who's going to pressure you and possibly make you make mistakes. You might be asking for a lot. I think correct. Em, I think Emmer should win. 
I think he's the pick. He's I'm picking him to win. But in terms of bet, I am looking very hard at Landwehr. I might be betting Nate the Train here as a as a he might be. People, no, that's not the dog one. I got the dog. Here's a dog. He, where's your well? There we go. <laughs> he might be a dog in this spot that I'm I'm really looking at. But Emmers is the side. What about you? I'm with you on Emmers being the side, but Landwehr possibly being a very live dog in this fight. Um, he's um he is a fucking dog. This guy comes to fight. He comes to make you uncomfortable. And like I, like, you know, as you said, I, I think pressure makes diamonds. And this diamond that he's going to probably be building in this fight is going to be one that's a W over Jamal Emmers. The reason being is because Jamal does make questionable decisions. I don't think he's going to do well with a pressure fighter. Am I going to bet Landwehr? Nah, nah, I won't go that far. It's something I'm looking at. And I, I agree with you. I'm not sure where I'm at with in terms of a betting standpoint. I just think that when you have a pressure fighter against a guy who has who makes questionable decisions, they're gonna be put into positions with split seconds to make decisions, which will cause them to make more mistakes. With that said, Jamal, if he has like a peak performance like he did against Bazookia and um some of his other losses that were close, he can win this fight. Because I thought he did beat Giga, Giga Chikaze, but you know, that's that's a story for another day, but I like Jamal here. Don't know how I'm going to bet this fight. UFC Atlantic City. Main card. We kicking it off with Shidi. Bang, bang. Jukuwani going one-on-one -on -one with Skeletor. Reese McKee. And Jukuwani, 22 and 10, fighting out of Las Vegas, 35 years old. Going one-on-one -on -one with McKee. Skeletor is 13, 5 and 1. Hailing from Ireland, fighting out of Ireland, 28 years old. Red flag for this fight immediately. Um, and Jukawani is cutting back down to 170 pounds. He hasn't done that in six years. And the reason why he stopped doing that is literally he said he was suffering, suffering permanent damage from cutting that much weight. I can see why he's doing it. And he's currently on a three fight losing streak. He needs to get a win here. I think Chidi's the side. This is a fight that I'm literally going to wait until weigh-ins. Because if he looks good and he makes the weight, because listen, six years ago he was in Bellator. Now he's here in the UFC. They got the performance center. He's got a nutritionist. He could probably safely make this cut. I don't know if this is, should be a permanent home for him, but we'll see after this first cut. I think... If he makes the cut, fine. I think Njukawani is 100% the side. I, think, I just think he's just a better fighter overall. I think he hits harder. He's the, he's the better striker. He's got the better takedown defense. Reese McKee, no offense. Doesn't belong in the UFC. I just, I mean, his attributes is that he's tough. Commentary just he, be blowing he, him about that. It's weird. He's probably got the cardio edge here more, more than likely. And he might have the volume edge here in terms of just throwing strikes, but I don't think he hits that hard. But with Chidi cutting down this much weight, who knows how his chin is going to be affected? I I think Chidi again until weigh-ins come in. I I'm a little I, I'm skeptical, but if everything clears, I think Chidi's the side here. I think Chidi gets McKee out of here. I I just I don't I don't I don't I don't rate McKee that. At that high. I think Njikwan is just a better fighter in my opinion. So that's the way I feel about this fight. But it's, it's just tough to bet Njikwani as the favorite with, with that much dilemma behind what's going on with him. I don't know. How do you feel? I'm with you. Um, I think Njikwani is the side. But, you know, the last time he made 170, he said that his vocal cords literally changed and that his organs were failing <laughs> i mean very very um it's worrisome it's very it's very bothersome yeah. it's definitely something i'm gonna wait for weigh-ins but i tell you what this guy was a minus 225 at one point and i think that's because people thought that it was probably gonna be at middleweight now people found that it's gonna be at welterweight and this line has been chopped down tremendously but if you give me this guy at Minus 135, which I see in some of these books right now. I'll play him because he's the bigger puncher. He does have, he, he is a black belt. Reese McKee is decent off his back. I do like Chidi early, Reese late, 
but I just don't like McKee's game. I think he doesn't belong in the UFC. I think he's very hittable. He's as well. so hittable against a guy who can put his lights out. Yes. This is going to be the biggest puncher he's faced. Yes. Outside of Kamzat. And, and, uh, and Kamzat don't hit like Chidi, in my and, opinion. And the one thing I'm not worried about going from weight to weight, at least, you know, going back from 185 down to 170, his power is going to carry. Correct. That power will carry. Everything else, I'm not too sure about, but I'm not doubting Chidi's power. And his overall skill. I think I just think he's just a better overall fighter. Yeah, listen, don't be surprised if we tweet out, hey, live bet on McKee, because Chidi looks like shit. Like, you know, after the first round. 100%. You know, like that that can definitely happen. Um, follow us on all social media platforms. Um I, I like um but I like Chidi. I like Chidi in this fight. He's the more talented guy. Um I don't know if he knocks him out because I don't know if McKee's been knocked out before, to be frank. Uh, I could double check that for you. Right I don't. I don't think he's he has been. He's he has hard two to. Knockouts. He's hard to kill like Steven Seagal, hundred percent. Because I've seen him take some Molly Wappers in there oh, and against Jamaev. He, he oh yeah, smoked, smoked, ground and pound. And then who's the other guy? Tim Barnett. Yeah, I mean, you know, his mama knows him. Who? <laughs> oh! um, I um, <laughs> I like Chidi here, and that he might get a bet depending on how he looks on the scale. Next fight on the main card. Again, there's a couple of featherweight fights here. And men's featherweight, we got Bill Senor Perfecto. Algio going one-on-one with the monster. Cal Nelson. Algio, 18-7 and seven overall, fighting out of King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, 34 years old. Cal Nelson, 15-5-1 overall. Hailing from Canada, fighting out of Canada, 32 years old. This is a good fight. Um, I think it probably should be lined a little closer, but I am leaning, I'm leaning Algio here. I mean, uh, Kyle Nelson, I, I probably would have been leaning Algio probably heavier, but Kyle Nelson has kind of evolved this game. I know he first came into the UFC. He was kind of like a, a little, um, what's the opposite of a uh, risk averse? I guess risky. Risky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he would go forward, just, you know, throw his hands, risk it. He didn't give a shit. Uh, he's turned that style into a more counter puncher slow down the fight technical style which has gotten him a couple of the wins recently algio i just think better jujitsu he can be taken down here he is very hittable i think he's the better striker though he will throw the volume i think algio i think the big difference between Nelson's more recent opponents and Algio here is that Algio is not really going to respect Nelson. Nelson is the harder hitter though. I think this fight should be more closely lined than what it currently is. I think if the Nelson line gets crazy out of hand, I do not, I do not hate anybody for taking a little, a little bit of a Kyle Nelson underdog bet here, but yeah, Kyle Nelson will Kyle Nelson. Yeah. He's hard to bet against. Yeah, he is. He is. And it's because he's he's just tightened up his game, you know? I think he's better defensively on the feet. Um, I think he's the better strike. Well, he's the harder striker. And um, I think he can get to the wrestling if he wanted to. But I, I think Algeo is just a little more dynamic, better jujitsu. Finishing upside is probably more on his side. Underrated wrestler. Underrated wrestler. I think uh, Algeo's the side for me here. But in terms of a bet, I'm not too sure how I want to play this one. I think Algio by decision. I, I don't think Kyle Nelson's easy to knock out or sub. And I, and Bill Algio is not the most prolific finisher. The one thing that sticks out about Algio and his losses, he typically loses to people that have one strong suit of the game. They're either a really good striker, a really good wrestler, typically wrestlers for him. But I will say um, Kyle Nelson's none of that. He's more of just a well-rounded fighter, which kind of plays into his, his wheelhouse because He's kind of just a well-rounded fighter too. Yeah. Which is good. That's how you should be in this game. However, like, you know, when you get exploited by guys that have one central part of their game that's just a little better than yours, it's alarming. I just don't see it in this contest for Kyle Nelson. Kyle Nelson has worked on everything defensively from the from the ground game to the striking game. I like Algio by decision here. Next fight on the main card. At middleweight, we got Nursultan Ruz Ruzibov. Ruzaboyev or Ruzabov, I'm not too sure. His nickname is Black. Hey, <laughs> going against Sergikis of the Reaper, Dumas. Nursultan, I, I, his first name is easier to say than his last name, I think. Uh, 38 
33-8-2 overall, fighting out of Uzbekistan, training out of uh, Pennsylvania, though. 30 years old. Going one-on-one with Dumas, the Reaper, Cedricus. 9-1 overall, fighting out of Pensacola, Florida. 28 years old. Uh, this fight, it, it looks like it's got Twitter divided currently, um, from what I can see. A lot of people riding super hard on the Dumas side currently. I I could, I could understand the logic. Um, Nursultan has got over forty fights, but a lot of them, taxi drivers and construction workers, and <laughs> the guy who picked up your garbage the other day, restaurant cooks and dishwashers <laughs> and shit. He fought a dishwasher. <laughs> he he. I think he actually fought a dishwasher at one point. <laughs> He might have fought a refrigerator. <laughs> Home appliances are not safe against. They're not safe around Nusultan. That's all I'm saying. But <laughs> we got Cedricus here, who originally started as a kick, uh, as a street fighter. You know, along uh, the Masvidal route we got here. But I think he's a very good kickboxer. Haven't seen it yet at the UFC level. He is super raw. He is kind of green. He's got the talent. He's the more athletic of the two. I don't know who I'm picking in this fight. I'm going to lean Nursultan. I don't know how I'm going to bet this fight. I think it probably unders, but I'm not too sure because Dumas hasn't shown a propensity to finish anybody here as of yet. You're picking Dumas, it's by decision. Nursultan, again, I mean... He clipped uh, Ferreira, but... Yeah, I just think people who are saying that was flukish, it's like, bro, he knocked him the fuck out. There's nothing flukish about a knockout. Yeah, yeah. And he set it up, too. So, you know, I decided to jump in, but it's... No, 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 it's... I've seen, I seen a lot of people on the Dumas... The, du, the, the, I'm gonna, the Dumas side. Yeah. And this guy kind of fights like a dumbass sometimes, right? Because... You know, people are like, oh, he has the wrestling and Ruzabov, you know, Ru- uh, Ruzabov doesn't really have good wrestling defense, which is true. The problem is I've only seen Dumas really use his wrestling when someone's wrestling into him. Yes. He does it. He's an opportunistic grappler. He's not, a, he's not a guy that shoots on you. He's not proactively wrestling. No. And if you're asking me who hits harder, it's Ruzabov. He throws his punches more straight down the pipe. I see a lot of people online betting Dumas. He might, he might be the asshole of the week for you guys. I'm, I, I, who knows? I, who who knows? knows? This, this fight is... I mean, I, listen, we got a guy who... I mean, people are saying is a fraud, and I can't even make the argument against it, against a guy who is super green and definitely not, like, nowhere near top 15 caliber at the moment. But, I mean, I mean, both guys got positives and negatives. This fight is probably the only fight I'm probably going to stay away from and just relax and watch, but... It's going to be fun. Yeah, it'll be I'd fun. i that much. Who knows? Maybe but, entertaining. Maybe more entertaining than fun, but... Yeah, but if, you, if you're if you asking me, like, you know, people saying that he, his last knockout was a fluke, it's like, bro, like, you know, I, I just I just have a hard time when, like, people don't give some of these guys the rub. Like, you know, that's like me saying, because Kamaro knocked out Masvidal was flukish. It was. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think so. You know, I'm not even a big fan of Kamaro. I joke, I joke. As you know, like, yeah. I'm not the highest supporter of this guy, but yo, a knockout to knockout, man. It just is what it is. And he knocked out a, a fucking killer. That guy's a good fighter. So, you know, I like Ruzabov just because of the strength of competition, to be frank, um, and the experience and the size. And I think he's the bigger puncher. He just is. I don't know if Dumas would have knocked out Ferrer like that. That's all I'm saying. I mean, maybe. But he, has, he just hasn't shown it yet. He That's hasn't shown it, yeah. He's still raw. I think this, this is an exploitable fight for him if he goes to his wrestling. If I just don't know if I'm going to bet a striker to go to their wrestling. I think he's going to want to test his metal on the feet. Like, I, I really believe that. So, But I feel like Nursultan kind of wants this on the ground, right? I mean, I don't know how this fight is fucking weird. It's right? weird. It's weird. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I don't know. It, there's too many variables. Stay away. Two guys that are kind of unproven in the UFC level. Stay away. Um, Ruzabov is the is the lead. Featured bout, UFC Atlantic City. Your boy, Middleweight. your boy, your boy, the All American, Chris Weidman. Hopefully, his retirement fight. It's definitely not. He's already said he's he. He's he, crazy. He wants to get a title. He wants to go for it. <sighs> the All American Chris Weidman going on one with 
Blandido. Bruno Silva. Silva, 23 and 10 overall. Fighting out of Brazil. Hailing from Brazil, 34 years old. Going against the All-American Chris Wyman, 15 and 7 overall. Fighting out of Baldwin, New York, 39 years old. Listen, I think, again, Chris Wyman, I think he's got all the literal tools and talent in the world to beat Silva. But 39 years old, class chin, a step slower than he usually, I don't know. This is completely broke his leg a few years ago, by the way. Bruno's the side. If Bruno doesn't do anything dumb, Bruno's got solid takedown defense, even though this is the best quote unquote, not quote unquote, this is the best grapple he's fought. Accolade wise. Yes. If he could keep the fight standing, if he could just land a shot on, on, on his chin. Wyman, as much as I don't want to see this guy get rinsed, is more than likely to get rinsed in this spot. If Wyman could just take him down immediately, I think all bets are off. But I'm leaning Silva here to win. I don't know how to. I don't know how else to like feel about this fight. Uh, Wyman could pull off the upset. Depending good matchmaking. On how it plays off. It's good matchmaking. It's a winnable fight for him. Absolutely, it is. Because Silva on his back, a turtle. Yeah. That has no idea what the fuck he's Black doing. Black belt in jiu-jitsu, but from where? From where? From where? I don't know. Dollar Tree, maybe. <laughs> That's where he's got the black belt. Who knows? Wyman, like I said, he's, he's, he's got all the tools, but the age, the chin, just you, you can't. You can, he hard, might, he it's might, hard to like, I he, don't know. He might get kicked in the leg once and just fall apart. This yeah. guy this guy shattered the lower part of his fibula like two, three years ago. Yeah. And, you know, then on his last fight with Tavares, he, he completely tore up his other leg. I mean, Lord, just please, someone. I mean, I hope he wins. Just, like, yeah, I'm, I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting for I'm yeah. actually rooting for him. Yeah, he's a New York guy. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to shit on the guy too much, man. But, you know, I just feel like, I mean, post-USADA, that's the other thing. I want to see how he looks because this is no more USADA. If he's on some shit, I'm playing him. This is this is that, one. This is, this is yeah, this you might want to wait till wins, yeah. Yeah, because I'm if I'm if I'm Bruno Silva and I see this guy come a little loaded, I'm gonna go to Dana White and be like, "This is number one bullshit." You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, that's the only way I think I would feel very comfortable playing Weidman because I just don't. I don't even know if he can really shoot anymore. He shot in on on Tavares. Tavares got excellent. No, he he, he does, but but Tavares is also not a finisher almost. He could have finished him at any point of that fight if he really wanted to put his foot on the gas. No. And Bruno Silva did finish. Tavares. Tavares. One shot. Not, to, very, not very, to play MMA math here. Very durable guy. Yeah. It just goes to show you how hard Bruno Silva hits. Yes. He hits dumb hard. So, and against a guy who I've seen winning fights until he's not. And then, if I'm correct, Bruno does have some late stoppages. He does have a second and third round stoppage right on his record. Uh, he does have, he does, he does have, he has a second, a third round stoppage. Uh, fourth round stoppage. He can go deep, man. Pause. He, his his power carries. So Wyman could be winning this fight until he's not. Like especially with a guy with a chin like that, it takes one. Augusta winning, he's gonna do the chicken dance on whatever legs he's got left. I feel bad talking about the guy like this because he is a New Yorker. He is a Sarah Longo guy. I just I don't see. I I I think it's very risky to play someone, even though he has a very gaping hole to vic- to victory. Ao. Yeah. Pause. I just I just. It's alarming seeing him fight. It's like watching Tony Ferguson fight right now. Tony Ferguson, one of my favorite fighters of all time. We got this poster up here on the wall. And it's hard to watch him fight at this point. I get, I get worried about him you know, as a fan. He's a grown man. He could do whatever he wants. Same thing with Weidman. But as a fan, you have concerns. This is one of those fights where I'm super concerned about him. Because if he does not get this to the floor, he's going to get knocked the fuck out. That's just what it is. So I'm going to lean Bruno, but... <sighs> I don't know. Chris Wyman in New York, probably on acai. That that might that lean might go the other way. It could. I mean, yeah. Weigh ins is definitely gonna tell us a lot. And not even New York. They're in New Jersey. They're close enough to New York. That's close enough. It's close enough. So uh, Weigh ins is gonna tell me a lot for this fight. So get ready, ladies and gents. Follow us on all social media platforms. <laughs> Co main event. UFC Atlantic City. Welterweight. Vicente Luque, the silent assassin, going on one on one with New Mansa. Joaquin Buckley, Luque, 22-9-1, fighting out of Brazil, hailing from Brazil, 32 years old. Joaquin Buckley, no Mansa, 17-6, and 
fighting out of St. Louis, Missouri, 29 years old. If this was Luke A from a couple years ago, a little younger, a little less uh, shop-worn, pre-hemorrhage, uh, brain hemorrhage, uh, this would be a probably not an easy Luke A bet or pick, but I'd definitely be leaning more Luke A than Buckley. That being said, he is a little shop worn. He is afraid to get hit. This is post hemorrhage Luke A here. Luke A in his last fight went to his wrestling extensively against RDA was able to win the fight. But even said himself, you know, he's just, you know, trying to avoid being hit. He said it. I'm on the Buckley side here. Just like the Kanye song. Bigger, faster, stronger. He's got everything. Buckley moving down to this weight. has been like a revelation for him. It's been a bit of a revelation. That's a perf- that's perfect wording right there. Uh, I like Buckley a lot here. I think he gets it done. Don't know how he gets it done. I mean, Luke's probably going to go to the wrestling. I don't think Buckley's got any kind of problems in that department. Cardio-wise, I, he's kind of shored that problem up. Yep. I, I just like Buckley. I think Buckley's going to get it done here. Buckley, Buckley, and we already placed a bet on him at Plus Money, guys. We wanted to tell you guys, but the line has stood relatively close to where it's at. It moved instantaneously. Yeah, as soon as, as, soon as we bet it, yeah. it. The same thing with Blanchfield, and we'll get into that in the next fight. Um, spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Um, but we we like we like Buckley here, and we like Buckley for a couple of reasons: um, bigger, faster, more explosive, younger, less shop worn, making better fight decisions. Luke, older, more shop worn. Didn't want to get hit by RDA. Was afraid to get hit by RDA. Wrestled him for most of the fight, um, and pick and basically fought a much smaller guy. I think uh, Buckley is going to be very hard to hold down. I think Buckley's going to have cardio for days, and especially in a three-round fight. I think Buckley can get this fight to the floor whenever he wants. He just has to watch out for Vincente's head and arm series, and I think he will for a couple of reasons because Bilal Muhammad was able to exploit Vincente Luque with blast doubles, and that's all Joaquin Buckley really does. Joaquin does not really work for singles. He runs right through you, and he is enough of a powerhouse to do so i mean yeah the blueprint out there to neutralize luke is out there just watch the below muhammad fight correct 100 percent. i mean and that's something that joaquin phoenix is 100 percent capable of and joaquin himself. phoenix i love it i say joaquin phoenix that's amazing <laughs> joaquin buckley the, yeah the joaquins bro know what i'm saying yeah trust in joaquin all of them <laughs> trust in all the joaquins and, and what i what i will say is that joaquin is um he, he he does a lot. He he's improved so much. His shot selections improved. His um his strike selections improved. His IQ is improved. I just think this weight class has just been a different experience for him as opposed to middleweight. And he was taking down big middleweights. And I, I just, oh, his overall mindset. I mean, back in when he was at uh what was it what uh, one eighty five, he was talking about like you know he was eating like shit not really taking it too serious. Now, like, he's just got a whole new mindset. He wants to compete. He wants to win. He wants to move up. This is a hungry Joaquin 2.0. Yeah, he's a beast. He he's is. a beast. And he's got the physical tools. The only reason I didn't play more units on this, I put a unit on it, guys, and my brother did too, I believe. Yes. Is because uh, Vincente is still Vincente. And I have a ton of respect for his game. 100%. He can get a Bravo choke on anybody, even though I think he's going to find it a little difficult to do on Joaquin because Joaquin is, um, Joaquin's wide on the shoulders to get that Bravo choke like and that um, head and arm. You have to get through the head and arm. And <laughs> this dude is just wide. I think it's going to be a lot harder for Vincente to execute that as opposed to more slender, more slim opponents. Um, but I just don't like I don't like Joaquin, uh, Vincente's mindset in terms of not getting hit. Because I feel like if you're in this game, you're going to get hit. And there's no way he's going to be able to prevent Joaquin from hitting him, in my opinion. His last fight wasn't a striking fight, which means I think his timing is still going to be a little off in the octagon. I, I like I like Joaquin here. I still think at minus 102, it's playable. It's a pick em fight at this point. I think it's playable. And I just I might put another unit. Especially if it dips back down to plus money, to be frank. I do have a lot of respect for Vincente, but I, there's just way too many questions on his side, man. 
There's way too many. And he's going against a big fucking man, to be frank. That does. Does, that's nuts. It's the truth. He's just, and he's faster. He's not only bigger than him, he's faster than him. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's, it, this is an easy pick for me. So Joaquin Buckley. UFC Atlantic City main event. Women's flyweight. We got cold-blooded Aaron Blanchfield going one-on-one with a beast. Manon Frio. I think I said that last name right. I don't know. I'll be butchering her last name. Yep. Uh, Blanchfield. Mm-hmm. 12 and 1. Fighting out of New York. 24 years old. The Beast. Furio. 11 and 1. Fighting out of France. 34 years old. I like this fight a lot. They shouldn't be fighting each other low key. They, I feel like they shouldn't, but at the same time, with technically with Valentina and Grasso kind of tying up the division, it makes sense. Somebody's one is well, somebody's one has got to go. Yeah, you know, both one. <laughs> they, they both got one loss. Listen, Menon, very good striker coming out of France. Uh, excellent cardio, mixes it up well. Great footwork, solid takedown defense. Aaron Blanchfield. Fucking dog. Probably one of the best grapplers in the division. Probably the best. Uh, I think she's got underrated power. I think she's got underrated footwork. I think Blanchfield is going to probably win this. It This probably goes the distance, but I'm not too sure on that. I could see maybe if you want to sprinkle a little bit of the uh, three, four, five on either side, to be honest. Menon, she, she's a bit of a sniper. And and Erin can get hit. I mean, she's minus 10,000 to bleed from the nose. Because she bleeds every fight from the nose. Like my brother said earlier, if you were listening earlier, spoiler alert, already bet Blanchfield. That line got crazy out of hand immediately. That's another one I kind of wanted to tweet out. But, you know, it just got so out of hand. I was like, eh, I can't put this shit out right now. Dr. Strange uh, movie trailer. <laughs> Things just got out of hand. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think, yeah, I'm with, you know, we did, we put two and a half units on Blanchfield. Um, yes. Was it two and a half? Yeah, yeah, we put two and a half to win two. Two and a half to win, yeah. I, I, I like her a lot in the spot, and there's a couple of reasons. I, I know there's a lot of people online saying free her out, you know, she's uh, got the better footwork, she's got this and that, man, I, I get all that. At and you least, want the real, at this line, I think you play her at plus 154. Yeah, I think this fight plays out pretty close, and I think more times than not, like I said, I think it goes to decision. Correct. Um, there's a couple of things I want to mention here. Manon. Very good striker. She's going to be the better the better striker in this fight. Yep. The question is, is she going to be able to keep Blanchfield off of her? I do think there's going to be some resistance, to be frank. 100%. But what I will say is, I've seen this girl get taken down by a smaller Jennifer Meyer. And Jennifer Meyer was able to get in. I don't want to say at will. When she went to decide to grapple, she decided to grapple. Yeah. She that, didn't do it too often, but what she did. Correct. She got in on her. And, and Jennifer took her down. Yeah. Um... Now, she's not, uh, like Blanchfield, Jennifer Maya is not like a prolific shooter. But she's good with the inside trips. She's also good at getting to your back. Blanchfield's the same way. Um, Manon's got to be able to um, peel her off of the cage and do a couple of things. I do think she's capable of this. I just don't like this fight for her five rounds. Because I do feel like if this fight does come to the wire, I'm going to lean with the girl who's at the finishing upside and the wrestling advantage. Because I do think she's going to give her some resistance early, but I think as this fight goes on, I think you're slowly going to start seeing it go Blanchfield's way. She fought Talia Santos, who I thought was a much tougher fight, to be frank, because Talia can strike. I don't know if she's a tougher fight. She definitely hit harder, and I think she's got the better takedown defense. Yes, yes. that That's why I thought so, right? Especially in a three-round contest. But Manon's definitely got the better footwork, and she's definitely going to throw more volume. 100%, Correct. So. Correct. Um, but what I will say is there's some there's some scenarios because we watched the Rose Newman Nam- and Eunice fight where if Rose is a little bit bigger, she would have got it to the floor. Yes. Um, especially off the body lock. If Erin Blanchfield gets on that body lock, she's going to go for a ride. I, I I think she's one of the stronger girls in the division. And I think this girl is, um, she's she's the future of this, of this division. She may not win the championship immediately, but I think she's going to win this fight. I think this is a very exploitable fight for her. And I think it's exploitable for two reasons. And I think there's two reasons that people are overlooking Aaron a little bit in this spot, especially at this line. I think her footwork is very underrated. She knows how to get out of the way 
and get and don't get me wrong this is the best striker she's fought 100 percent. i'm not gonna i'm not even gonna take that away from her but she has fought girls that can hurt her like jessica andraj who did crack her and she was able to make adjustments and able to get to that body lock and take her down she's also um underrated with her fight iq and i seen a couple of people online saying that she was sucking air in the talia santos fight in the third round what fucking fight were you watching? She looked like she could go another two or three rounds. Talia was breathing hard. She was sucking air. She was happy that fight was over. Talia was cooked. She was cooked. Yeah. If that fight would have went four and five, I oh, think... Yeah, it would have been a finish. Blanchfield would have finished her. Yeah. So, you know, I think Talia was a tougher fight for Blanchfield, in my opinion. Um, this fight is only good for Manome because she doesn't have to worry about the striking. But I do think, like my brother said, that Aaron's hands are like super rated, super underratedly heavy hand. She's super underratedly heavy handed. Handed. Yes. Sorry. I, I don't know why that came out weird, guys. She's trying but to spit some bars there. That's why yeah, I think I super fuck you shit like a cat yeah, I don't yeah, know what yeah, that yeah. No, no, that's you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I, nope. I butchered the shit out of that. Yeah, too, I bail I bail on that phrase all the time. <laughs> I just bail. You know, so but what I um, outside of that, I just think um, in situations like this with a five round fight, um, Blanchfield, where's she from? New York, brother. This is uh, this is some East Coast cooking right here, brother. That's all I'm saying. You know, I I, know this, I understand my known with the French market. She's also 34 years old too. Ten year age difference. By the the ten year age difference too. I'm also we're also paying attention to. Especially, it would be more interesting if Blanchfield was like. A not as experienced fighter. Yeah. Not not as good at what she does and implementing her game plan. Like Monon's 100% the more complete fighter, especially at her age. Aaron Blanchfield still growing, still got stuff to improve on, still got stuff to, stuff to display. We don't know. She might show something that we haven't seen here before. Yes. Maybe that's not something you should bet on necessarily. But even with the stuff that you have seen, I feel... Confident. Decently confident that she's probably the side here. And she's making, and I, I trust her to make more improvements between camp at this point. 100%. Because she's show every fight she's leveled up. Yes. Every fight she's gotten better. Yeah, she got thrown around by, um, what's homegirl's name that we, we, we like too, that she took her down. She wrestled her. Uh, I don't recall. Her first time. fight um, in the UFC, if I'm correct. Uh, give me a second. Pull up her resume here. Sarah Appler? No, no, Maverick? no. J.J. Aldridge. J.J. Aldridge. So it was technically her third fight in the UFC. I just don't think she was expecting J.J. to take her down. But you want the real. I, I, I could see a world where Manon tries to take her down. But the thing is, Manon has typically gotten a lot of smaller, um, a lot of smaller opponents down to the floor. Blanchfield is very good at keeping her hips back. And knowing what her weight's supposed to be at the right time. I just don't see her getting tossed around by this girl. I think she's going to be stronger than her in the clinch. Unless this girl has the tie clinch and she's throwing knees and elbows in between. It's just going to be pretty interesting to see Manon defend. It's always easier. For five rounds. It's always it's always easier to, to go to the wrestling than to defend the wrestling. It's always harder to defend the wrestling. So gas is going to be pretty interesting. I think both of them are going to be pretty decent going down the stretch. But... I'm going to lean the wrestler here, obviously, because, again, it's easier to go for takedowns than it is to defend takedowns, in my opinion. She, she know, she, the thing is, she can dictate where the fight goes. And I, I just don't see, a, across the course of five rounds, Manon being not hitting the floor once. I don't see that. I think that you're, what you're betting on is Manon to, to, to pitch the perfect, the, perfect, the perfect fight. Yeah. And I don't know if that's going to happen. What I do know is if that this fight hits the floor, Blanchfield can definitely sub her. There's no doubt in my mind she can sub her. Because yeah. she's going to be heavy on top. She's good at taking the back. She's good at the from the rear naked choke position. She's good from the body lock. Even some ground and pound is not even out the possibility. She's vicious. On she's the vicious, bro. You see what like, she did to Molly McCann. I mean, it was Molly McCann. Yeah. She put that woman in a crucifix and beat the shit out of her. So Yeah. And, I thought, it, hit, and it hit the... Dirt off the shoulder shit. I'm saying pop, Easy pop. work. Easy work. Her nickname's Cold Blooded and it's a reason for it because she she don't give a fuck. Nah. She's not afraid of this girl. She's not gonna be intimidated by the moment. She's already had a big fight yeah. with Talia. I just I just you know, Manon fought Rose, but like I said, and to finish off this, the ten year age uh gap difference, it's uh I believe it's sixty eight percent in in favor of the younger fighter. So on top of her being the wrestler who's probably going to have the better gas at the, the, the on the longer term stretch of this fight 
and she's the wrestler and gets to dictate where this fight goes. Plus, she's fucking durable and she's going to be the stronger fighter. Plus, she's younger and has underrated footwork. I'm I'm gonna lean Blanchfield. We're not even lean. We bet Blanchfield already. Yeah. Um, but at this line, I don't blame anyone for taking Fiero at plus one fifty plus odds. Yeah, I, right now it's dog or pass. And if you still like the uh, the Blanchfield side, I mean, I think you can still stick around a parlay. But you know, you know, again, bet responsibly, ladies and gentlemen. But, Absolutely. But yeah, it, at this line, it's probably dog or pass. It is gonna be a close fight, and you don't know what the fuck the judges are gonna do when it goes to when it goes to decision at the end of the day, because. The, the risky part about betting Blanchfield, if she doesn't get crazy damage off, they don't, you know, judges don't really like control, you know? Which is, I think it's crazy, but... So, I mean, again, Menon at dog odds is not crazy considering that they value striking way more than they value the grappling, so... Yep, and Blanchfield, the hometown girl, who's not going to be... He's, she's not going to crumble under this moment. No. That's what I'm telling you. This chick is... She's the real deal, in my opinion, so... And that's all, folks. That's all we got here for UFC Atlantic City. Top to bottom, just like the Generation X, we broke it, broke it, broke it, broke it down. But that's not all we got to break down. We got some boxing for your ass. So uh, without further ado, let me throw it over to my brother. Yeah, let me, uh, you want to you wanna kick off the cards or shall I? Uh, let's see, on Friday, I'll kick it off, fuck it. <laughs> Friday, we got a uh, top ranked car. We got Oscar Valdez going one on one with Liam Wilson. But that's not the real main event. The real main event is the co main event where we got Senista Estrada going one on one with Yocasta Valle for the undisputed female strawweight title. Banger of a card on Friday. What are your thoughts? Oscar Valdez, Liam Wilson is, is definitely the right fight to make at the right time, to be frank. Oscar Valdez coming off a loss to Navarrete and Liam Wilson coming off a loss to Navarrete as well. Um, <laughs> I, I, I like, this is, I think the line's about right. Minus 350 for Oscar Valdez, Liam Wilson at a plus 265. Oscar Valdez should win this fight because I think he is the more precise and more defensively responsible fighter. However... Liam Wilson does have real power um, because what Oscar Valdez wasn't able to do to Navarrete was hurt him. Liam Wilson dropped him and almost stopped him. And then Navarrete had to kind of rally back to stop him because you could argue he was losing on the scorecards. This is a great fight. This is a great, this is, this is, this is what boxing should always be doing, to be frank. How will I look at this fight? I, I think I'm going to lean Valdez via decision because Liam is so much bigger than him. And Valdez is not really the guy that's knocking out Berchelt anymore. He's a little older, a little more shop worn. I haven't seen it from him lately in terms of like, you know, coming, you know, going after, you know, his opponents. And Liam is big. Liam is big. I do trust Valdez to navigate him and get it done via decision. I think that's how this fight's going to end. That would be how I'm leaning. I think that might be how I'm going to bet it as well. Now, leaning into the real main event, and it's funny because both co-main events of this weekend for boxing, I think, are the real fights. Even when Keith Thurman fell out from the Tim Zhu fight this weekend, I still thought the more interesting fight was the Roley Isaac Cruz fight. Yes. Because I think Tim's going to rent fucking Keith Thurman. Spoiler whenever they alert, fight. that's the Saturday card. Correct. And we'll jump into that in a second. But this Sanisa Estrada uh, Valle, uh, your Costa Valle fight, your Costa coming out of... Born in Nicaragua, raised in Costa Rica, representing Costa Rica, going against the Mexican-American Estrada. I think this fight has could be fight of the year. It's going to be amazing. And there's a lot of things I like about this fight. I, I'm surprised that Estrada is a minus 200. I thought you'd be a little more of a heavy favorite. I guess because Valle is bigger. Valle is a pressure fighter. The only thing I don't like about Valle's game, Valle doesn't really go to the body as much as I would like her to. She kind of had hunts, swings wide. Estrada does too, but Estrada is a little more tight with her punches and she goes to the body. She's going to be faster. She's going to be younger. I like Estrada via decision here, but it's going to be a war. And both of these girls don't have real uh, knockout power. They have 20 plus fights, nine knockouts, but nine knockouts against people that you can't even really find their Wikipedia pages. To be frank, or and even find him on box rec. I, I like I like Estrada's game a little better. I think she puts her punches together a little better. The trash talk leading up to this fight has been tremendous, to be frank. It's been one of the better built women's fights I've seen in a while. 
I just don't understand why it's not headlining. Maybe because it is a woman's fight in boxing. And I'm going to be frank with you. Boxing is a little sexist, which I don't get it. They should be letting these women fight three, uh, three minute, 12 rounds. And they still got them doing, I think, two minute, 10 rounds. Um, I like Estrada here. I like Estrada to get it done via decision as well. Yeah, I don't have any picks for this top rank card. Um, but I am going to le- be leaning Valdez here. I'd say about medium to low confidence on that. And for the Estrada Valle fight, I am leaning Estrada more more confidently than the uh, main event. Uh, no official bets here for me personally. I personally need to I need to dig deeper into all these boxing fights because I I, I kind of forgot these boxing fights were happening this weekend. If I'm being completely honest. Yeah, it's not your fault. Boxing's so terrible at promoting. And especially good fights, which is hilarious. Because yeah. both these fights on Friday are bangers. And the fights on Saturday are bangers. You could make an argument. Um, and not now you can't. Because I just think the UFC is just well, way more promoted. Uh, they're not bigger fights than, than UFC. That's why we didn't cover them first. And speaking of the boxing fights on Saturday, we got Tim Zhu not fighting Keith Thurman in the main event. We have instead Tim Zhu going one-on-one with Sebastian Fondora in the main event. With the co-main event being Roley, Rolando Romero going against Pitbull Isaac Cruz. Um, for that, for the Saturday card, um, Keith, um, Fundora, like Keith Thurman, is going to get knocked out by Tim Zhu. I think Tim Zhu is the real deal. I think Jermel Charlo has his hands full when he wants to fight him. I think um, Terrence Crawford is going to have his hands full when he fights this guy. I think Tim Zhu is a tougher fight for Terrence Crawford at this point in time than Jermel Charlo. With that said... I, Fendora, humongous. I think he's like 6'5". He fights like he's 5'2". Likes to fight in the pocket. He puts himself in the line of fire to be hit. And I don't like his game at all, to be frank. Um, who was the last guy that Tim Zhu fought? Um, Tim Zhu had fought... Um, what's his name? Uh, give me a sec. I, gotta bring I don't remember his name, which is terrible on my part. I should have been a little more prepared, ladies and gentlemen, so I apologize. But that guy knocked out Fendora in his last um, two, two, one or two fights ago. Brian Mendoza. 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 Good chin, good power, knows how to angle in and out. Knocked out Fendora. Tim Zhu beat the brakes off of him in the later part of that fight. I don't want to do boxing math because styles do make fights. But Mendoza is not as hittable as Fendora. Fendora is just there to be hit. It's just what it is. And someone who hits like Tim Zhu... At the elite level, he's going to find his chin at some point in this fight and put him out. Now, the line, I think, is like at minus 240 or some crazy shit. You either parlay that, in my opinion, or we're going to try and figure out for you before this weekend starts where the, um, where the, um, the, the more or less he might knock him out. I think it's going to be in the middle rounds because Tim Zhu's kind of a builder. The thing is, Fandora is so hittable, he might knock him out in the first round. Yeah. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Now, for the co main event. Uh, which I also think should probably headline this card, to be frank. Roley and Isaac Cruz. Roley, all the time in the world, as you said, hits very hard. Tank Davis said he is the hardest hitter that he's fought. And Ryan Garcia, um, and then Ryan Garcia also said that Roley hits harder than Tank. So that's two confirmed sources from two boxers that are pretty known on the circuit about how hard Roley Romero hits. If you've ever seen Roley Romero spar Ryan Garcia, he put mitts on him too, low key. Like, now, with that said, Pitbull Cruz, not going to go away. The more technical boxer, literally the Pitbull, like literally going to charge in, make it a dirty fight, go to the body. He's going to do a lot of good things in this fight. The question is, has Roley made any improvements between camp and the time off to deal with him and put mitts on him, land a big shot, get his respect early? Tank Davis couldn't do it. Tank Davis actually wound up hurting his hand because he wound up hitting his forehead in the fight, hurting his wrist. Which and Pitbull is durable. If you look at his fights, he looks like he walks in the same. He walks out the same way he walked in. With that said, I think Pitbull. If I'm correct, he is a underdog in this fight, right? Let me see. I'm gonna double check. Is that. he? I think Romero's the underdog. He is actually. Yes, you're right. Pitbull is the favorite at minus two seventy five. I do like him by decision here, but I'm not. Let me let me get back to you on that one. That one, I'm, I'm kind of just. I also have to do a little more footage because Roley is hittable, but Roley's only been knocked out by Tank, who is a precise sniper. 
Isaac Cruz, not the same sniper, but can put together punches and put some damage on you. I just don't know if the TKO is going to come because Roley is, Roley has the ten, has the power to land something back. And one thing about Roley, I don't think he's a bitch. I think he's going to go in there and he's going to throw if he has to throw. And before he goes out, he's going to land a couple of shots on you on the way down. So I don't see the referee getting too involved with this fight. Um, but I do like Isaac Cruz in this fight. I don't want to say Roley's a live dog. He's not as live of a dog as um, as Liam Wilson. Liam Wilson's probably the biggest dog of these four fights that we talked about. Yes. And that's just because Oscar Valdez has not shown the propensity to be at the level he was when he knocked up Miguel Perchelt. He's taken one loss to Shakur Stevenson at that point. He lost, he, um, lost beat two guys that he probably should have beaten. He probably should have stopped them, to be frank. And then he lost to Navarrete, who he couldn't put damage on, but Liam Wilson put damage on him. I like Isaac Cruz here, with that said, and I like Tim Zhu for the Saturday card. Isaac Cruz, not sure how, via decision or late knock. It's going to be a late knockout. I'll say that. It's probably going to be 6-12 to 12 if you're going to pick the knockout for Isaac Cruz. But Tim Zhu is the wild card. I don't know when he's going to get this guy out of it, but I think he does. I think he could drop him with a body shot. I just think the level that Fundora is fighting at, it's a, such a huge step up. I didn't even think Keith Thurman, and he's a welterweight, was... Keith Thurman would last longer than Fundora in this fight just because he has the footwork and he he's has the evasive. He, he, I wouldn't say durable, but he's more evasive. He knows how to, he, he's a better boxer. Fundora, not a good boxer. And he's fighting a guy that's a fucking puncher and a guy who has very underrated fight IQ, in my opinion. I think Tim knows how to make adjustments in fight and lands to the body and lands to the head. That's where I'm at with boxing for this week. And then that's all we got, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you like the breakdowns here. We try to give you the best of the best. My brother clearly a little more proficient in the boxing area than I am. I'll admit it. But, you know, shit, we still making money regardless. You feel me? <laughs> but with that said, you already know the deal. Like, follow, subscribe, comment, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Everybody enjoying the visuals right now. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay up to date. And for all of our audio listeners, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcast, you already know. You guys already know what it is. We love you guys. Thank you for all the views. Thank you for all the love. Every subscription, every comment, every like helps. Love you guys. See you guys next week for episode 50. Take it easy. Enjoy the fights this weekend. Love you. Let's make this money.